lovely darlings, we're going to be playing Viewfinder all afternoon long. A little bit about this game. Uh, it, this is a surrealist puzzle game, and I'm not really going to tell you the mechanics that I've seen. We're just going to go look at them live. Um, I have had this game suggested to me here and there in the past, and I was at GDC earlier this year, and there's an event I like to hit called the Indie Mix event, the Media Indie Exchange, where basically there's a ton of uh, indie games, ton of press, and you can go and try out a huge slew of just awesome, sweet, cool games. And this was one of them that I got the chance to actually play, and it was amazing. And I was like, all right, I got to stop playing because I'm definitely going to stream this when it comes out. And it's today. Let us play. Uh... Great, we're in. Time to explore. And for those curious, I am playing on a PS5. And you know, let me actually just go to the settings and change the field of view down. Because I knew this would be an issue. I immediately got nauseated at the turn. Keep. There we go. That, that, that feels more normal to me. All right. I'm afraid the butter flavor is a work in progress. We're coating pillows to watch the footage. There's no time like the present. You can build anything, yet you start to build a lab. You know, I actually want to take an extra moment to just see what's going on out here. Like, this is a nice landscape to just check out initially, huh? Just some real bizarro floating in the middle of the sky action. Perfect, perfect. Anything interactable? The sensitivity is a little, a little high for me. Oh, jump! Oh, a game with a jump button? Oh, hell yeah! That's fine. I'll just get used to it. What is this place? What even is? You know, I've never seen this much overgrowth before. That's it's, what she's shocked about. It's beautiful. Is this what it used to look like? The world? Dude, no, no, no! Give me a break. The overgrowth is what we're surprised by, not the fact that there's buildings floating in the sky. Also, Tortellini, what a treat to see you. Tortellini was at GDC with me when we actually played this game. Whoa, you okay? I gotta uh, turn this down. Good. That scared the I crap guess out of me. I know now that falling doesn't hurt. That's some good news at least. <laughs> All right. Must be oh. a way to get back up there. Hold this to rewind. Oh, you what? That's sick. All right. Braid anyone? What's an old photograph doing here? All right, let's see if I can adjust these settings on the sensitivity a little bit. Is it down here? What is this scale? So I can't go anything in between? I can't go in between? Wait, 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 wait. Is this the first puzzle of the game that I can't actually do anything in between 0.57 and 1? Okay, let me try hitting... Oh, no, that doesn't do it. Okay, so let me hit this. Can I... Did the R buttons do anything? All right. There it is. All right, cool. We're going to go back to 1.0. Hold L2 to aim, then press R2. So L2 to aim. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember this. And then press R2. Can you do something with it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you see that? Did, oh yeah. Did you just shift reality? I did, didn't it? A teleporter. Ed says this is the most Sean game ever. This this game might actually be genetically engineered to be for me. I I, I want to wander around a little bit first. If you're seeing some hitches, those are happening in game. Again, I'm running on a PS5. 
we do have to explore every nook and every cranny, right? Malcolm says, okay, that is trippy. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I actually didn't even notice this. If I hold this button, it'll rewind back to when I placed it. Is there a run? Can I... That's supposed to be a run? Oh. Hard to believe that we've all finally managed to come together. This assembled team of brilliant minds here to bring to life my vision. Or rather, our vision. Oh, we've all been on that sort of team. To detail our first list of tasks, then I'll return to the party. Uh-oh. We have an emergency. We have an emergency. On it. Ah, there's a file that I need to transfer that I didn't transfer. I might be a bad person. There it is. Bang. Look at that. Look at that. The file has been transferred. Let me make sure I'm not going to dox myself. I don't have my hard drive open. Because on my hard drive, I just have links and instructions of how to get to my house. Fourth wall broken. I know. Devastated. See this? Nothing more fourth wall breaking than looking at me. So, let us continue. You know, when I'm sitting, I like to have my controller right between my legs. But if I'm standing, I like to have my resting on the desk. Alright, fine, we'll teleport. Glad you made it in one piece. Alright. Teleporter needs to be powered. All right, I know, I know this puzzle. So here, here's one of these things. So I can pick it up and I can put it down. Right, cool. So I need to get out of this. Some pretty paints, some nice decorations. Hey, look, it's a second battery. Ah. Oh. It's almost working. Looks like we need one more. Is this the future where you don't actually have a socket that you plug the battery into? You just throw it onto a giant pad and it just works? Can we go back? Probably. No, I can't. I can't go back any longer than I've been here. Hey, Darasi, happy 45 months. Thanks for keeping us in your thoughts for four years, Darasi. And oh my. Look, it's a battery. Oh, I placed it too far away. See, there's the battery that we need. Can I... Oh, dude, I'm awesome. Th this is like, I think, such a good reason to have this rewind time mechanic showed first, because I can, like, misplace it. Alright, so let's actually place it flush here, huh? Whoa, that isn't... I mean, like, that tech is insane. Like, it actually... First of all, it devoured this chunk of wall, and then it placed that... And I assume that the picture has a very specific size. God, how do you even do that? Because if any of you played the game Super Liminal, the way that Super Liminal worked is you would pick up an object and it would try to force that object as far back as it could. And then it would enlarge it based upon where it was at the back. And if you haven't played Super Liminal, nothing I said makes any sense there. But this game seems to say, okay, well, all of these photographs have a fixed size and so you know what size the object is when you place it well done. and then probably it does some sort of like terrain gobbling afterwards no go you know i cannot stand these types of activities here i am my love please hold still what do i even do with my hands 
just relax them and try to smile. Super Luminal is also amazing. Who I didn't actually wind up playing all the way through it. Digital landscape. Tell me, <laughs> is this technically traditional or digital? <laughs> Enough questions. Stop moving. Smile. It's so quiet here. Dude, let me tell you. If this is how my office was, I would go there all the time. All right, well, let's just look around. So th there's a teleporter in there. Huh. All right. So let's look at this. You know, I, I think I will just place this right here. God, that is super sweet. Teleporter needs to be powered. So, I mean, I see... I see what appear to be solar panels here. Can I jump off the edge? What if I don't? That actually makes me feel so scared. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I can't go all the way down. Dude, literally, like, that brings back that subnautica fear. Like, I am not going to go to the bottom of the mist. I'm not going to do that. Alright. Nice. So you rewind to the last marker. Excellent. So if I did like this... Not bad. So I can go tap tap. Sick. So let me actually place this like... Here. Ah. Dude, I'm so scared about falling too much. Hey, half breezy, happy 78 months. I don't get to catch the live stream much anymore, but excited that I finally got my sub streak back to a year. Dude, hell yeah. All right, so I'm going to place this in a more normal fashion. So I place this here. Now I can actually see out this side. And it feels like I need to get up there, because there's some wind. Various panels are there. Alright. I don't exactly see another place far away that I could be going to. And I, I love puzzle design like this, where what it does is it creates a stupidly limited space for you to actually work with. And then you have to figure out how to navigate that specifically stupidly limited space. So maybe if I put this, like, here. So this is where I'm, I, I'm not 100% sure what the rules are. Whether this needs to intersect with, say, one of... This is going to be my current working theory, is that I need to get this to intersect with one of those hookups. So if I, like, place this back here and the power, then... Oops, let me undo that. Up is what how it aligns. I think that this is wrong, but I'm going to just try it one more time. Oh, oh look, oh look, we have some... We have some power cabling. Oh hey look, this lamp. Maybe I should put it where this lamp is? I want to see actually how much it deletes. So it actually just consumes the entire space. So yeah, I don't think that that is it. I think I actually just need to 
do the more basic thing and just travel up here. So let's just do that. All right, so now my goal is to try to get up to here. Huh? I can see up there, and I don't actually see a battery. This is very funny to me. Dude. I found it. I found it simply by looking at it. Holy shit. You guys wish you were this smart. Like, I can tell. I can see the jealousy. Mm, nice one. <laughs> you fucking wish you were this smart, man. Like, you just... I can feel the envy from here. <laughs> yeah, I bet I bet none of you even got that achievement, huh? Alright, let's rotate this that way. Alright. <laughs> hey, there, we go. there we go. Look, Jesse thinks I'm smart. Jesse knows I'm smart. This place definitely feels different than what we've seen so far. It looks like someone really settled here. It's, uh, it's really nice. I wish I could be in there with you. Jealous, jealous okay, AI. next? Alright, just looking around. Nice place. This is very similar to the home I live in right now. What's through the door? Oh, yes, of course. My floating bathhouse. Love this. Hey, by the way, how's the audio level in the game right hmm. now? It must be a security measure. A structured path we have to follow. Well, let's find the next working one. Perfect. Yeah, now I had it turned up a little loud. I think the last game I streamed on this was Elden Ring. No, it was Tears of the Kingdom, that's right. Joe Darkwolf says, I often think you're smart, Day 9, but then you have to go and prove me wrong again. Wow, ouch! Oh my god, my little heart hurts so much. Owie! Owie, owie, oh! Teleporter's locked, sure. I have to turn really slowly or else I get a little dizzy. All right, so this teleporter is okay. This must be the next stage. Let's go. I'm not going to go. Cuz last I did that didn't go so well. What? What happened? My my mind. So so wait wait wait. If I if I jump onto this, so this there's no collider. There's no collider, and it literally resets me. Are you kidding me? There's no collider. No collision on bars. Wow, this game really wants me to do it its way, huh? A mind-bending puzzle game where you're gonna do exactly what we fucking ask you to. All right, in we go. All right, now my usual move is to just keep trying this. I want to see what happens if we just keep falling. Oh, that's it? Oh my gosh, dude. Subnautica has me trained. Subnautica tells me that if you keep falling, it's literally gonna be a monster. Oh. Ooh, oh. Alright. You know what's funny? 
my little timer that tracks how long it's been since I hit the go live button just hit 37 minutes. And in my brain went, tier 4 items are up, guys. <laughs> hey, man. It's a Dota joke, by the way. What up, Meltor Foss? Oh my god, why don't I hold it up? Uh-oh. I think I figured it out. I think what you're supposed to do is put it like this, so that way no cars can cross, but you can. Follow the gray brick road. Yeah, look at this. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Entryways. Who wore it better, huh? Now, so Furious says, hey, day nine, what words of soothing wisdom can you give to someone who just bombed their coding section of their interview and is now doubting their years of experience and credentials? Oh my god, is it rant o'clock, Mount Sephirius? It is. I didn't realize how low energy I was until you asked me this thing that's really pissed me the fuck off. Coding interviews, whiteboard coding stuff, I think is such a garbage thing to do. Like, the correlation between your performance on a coding review and uh, your ability to code, it's, it's, uh, uh, some of the, the most brilliant and fast coders I have ever known just get really stressed when they have to do something in 30 minutes. If you say to them, you have two hours, they'll do it in five minutes. But if you say to them, okay, all the eggs are in this basket. And a lot of people just can't quite handle that pressure. And if you think about it, engineering, doesn't actually function like that. Circus performing does. If you backflip through a flaming hoop and are off a little bit, you'll get hot. <laughs> you know, like the idea of, of really focusing, getting clutch under pressure just is not the same thing as sitting down and like figure out how to juggle a coding problem or something like that. I mean, oh my God. And, it, and here's the thing, Mouse Furious. It's not that it has zero correlation, because if I said, write a function that prints the numbers one to 10, use a loop. If you go, I don't know what a function is. All right, that's probably pretty bad. But, uh, dude, tons of people bomb in that sort of situation. Like I would consider myself someone who doesn't just do well under pressure, but thrives under pressure. And I have just done pair programming with someone and locked up and gotten really self-conscious and couldn't think in pair programming, not even in an interview. So, I mean, don't, don't stress about a thing now. Oh, I got a ducky. Oh, ship it, ship the ducks. Maybe there's a surface you can use to climb up there. Maybe there's a surface, or perhaps there's a photograph. What? Look at this cat! The cat's gone. I have deleted the cat. The cat is no more. This is a catless game. I miss the cat. Wait a minute! His tail's there, but he's not. Oh shit! Oh my god! No, there's the cat! I see the cat again. Oh my god, the cat dodges! I didn't realize this! Oh my god, is that Neo? Alright. Alright, let me hold it up. Let me rotate it like this. You know, the game clearly wants me to walk up that side, but I just, I want to spike the game at least a little bit. Fine. Uh, oh. oh, it's too steep! <laughs> Alright, no, I'm going to solve this very easy puzzle. I'm going to solve it. Some of you are going to be like, wow, how does he do it? He's just so amazing. He's a day nine guy. He's the best. All right. Is it safe? Hey, buddy. 
Oh, dude, fuck yeah. What beautiful fur you have. Oh, yeah. Mmm, yeah. Oh, what a good cat. All right, keep going. Wait. Uh. I'm not supposed to be here, am I? I'm supposed to be over there. It's fine. I, 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 I did the right thing. There it is. <sighs> Can I just say, I love when a puzzle game is actually broken into concrete stages. I really like that. Th there is something that can kind of take you out of the gaming experience, I feel. Where, like, level one, level two, level three, and it's just so clearly, like, you do some gameplay, you stop, there's a level screen, you load the next one, go back in. Even this sort of thing, where there's a sort of seamlessness, where you get to the teleporter and you're instantly in the next level. Um, you know, can eliminate some of that. And even then, you'll feel a little bit like, yeah, I feel like I'm doing a sequence of levels. But, I mean, for me personally, I just really like that sensation of understanding what kind of steps I'm taking when I have succeeded, when I have failed. Treasure art in the making. All right, so so if I if my brain is functioning properly, this is kind of a clever thing. This this is like a specific pattern that we have seen used only when you are able to place an object to get through something. Like, hey, look, there's the battery. Can I like use my CS jump map skills to get around the backside? Mm -mm. Yeah, this symbol suggests to you. You should try to find a way to get through this. And there's lots of other, like, half barriers. You know, like, for instance, this sort of shape. They could have made a clay wall and just put, like, holes in it. But this is just, like, a nice, subtle way to be suggestive of what you should do. All right, well, the battery's gone. Dude, this, this is just a skybox. V fixes. I could be wrong, but I believe the system was initially developed for the Portal series by Valve years back. Not sure how it ended up getting made. Uh, which system were you referring to, VFIC? Uh, so I hit this button. <laughs> Get skyboxed, idiot. I know, I feel like such a dumb dumb. These are just these are just wall eliminators. All right, remember that whole spiel I gave about how like this is suggested that you should blast through it, and the other one might not necessarily be. Boom. Well, I wonder what was in here. <laughs> So what I, what I want to do is I, I just want to blast off just a wall here. He fixes the detective of them showing this gimmick system. Um, let, let me be more clear with my question, Vfic. There is the... Uh, drop it off. It's alive. <laughs> it's alive! <laughs> there is this system yeah, too much. whereby yeah. you sort of pass from one area to another and you have the ability to view through this side even though it is effectively a flat space and this idea of like how this opens up like that like there's that mechanic that was developed in a Digipen student product called Narbacular Drop, and Digipen is in Seattle where Valve is, and some Valve employees saw that, bought the team, and then took that mechanic and made that into Portal. So there's that one. Or if you're talking about this, like,
blast through the space with a different camera. I I didn't know that, if that's the, the mechanic you're referring to. Oh my god, Willie Nelson's headband. Says, love you, buddy. Hope you're doing well. I am actually... How am I doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm pretty good, man. Yo, dude, I'm fucking... I'm good. I'm good. I pick up photo. I, you know what? I'll put it here. Put him at the camera part. Ah, nice. Oh, that's unusual. So the photo is acting a bit weird. All right, so I, I know how to solve the puzzle, but I'm curious what happens if I keep going in. Uh, it's difficult to... Can you hear me? Welcome back. A little too soon for my liking, but happy to have you. Seems like the simulation had some difficulty maintaining itself. We might need to reroute our power sources to keep it running. Bummer, but that's what we get for messing with old tech. Don't worry, love. We'll get it sorted, and then it's off to the races with you. You mean that wasn't real life? I thought that was real life. I thought that that's how life was in this place, and that's why there weren't any people, because people kept holding photographs up to their faces and dropping it and realizing that they'd killed everyone in front of them for miles. All right. Lab pictograms. This, this is gobbledygook, right? Like, that's not... Who knew it would be this tricky to get ancient tech back in working order? Just look at all this junk lying around. Uh, <clears throat> don't be cruel, Jesse. These people were trailblazers. We could find a real tree of life in there. Or is it more accurate to call it a lightning rod? Well, well, either way, one thing's clear. The weather disruptor really might be the game changer we need. The weather disruptor. Uh, do you think there's an apocalypse outside? Oh my god, it's San Francisco one year ago. Oh yeah. So, like, literally, I do not care at all how many times I see this trope of, like, the utopian simulation next to the devastating reality. I love this. I love this. It's so good. I don't care. Like, this was uh, uh, Soma, right? Soma's awesome. Uh, what are some other What are some other good ones of that? <laughs> Assassin's Creed. <laughs> gotcha. Is it bad because it's orange? Yeah, so... Um, um, for those of you that didn't follow the news when there were fires on the West Coast, or more recently fires on the East Coast, the particulates that are in the air cause the light to bend and flex and change. I don't know what the exact right words are for it, but absorbing everything except the orange light that you see. And so it kind of is, in effect, as we have seen in... Um, like Blade Runner movies, where there's this, like, rich orange color in the sky. It's not just because that looks cool in a sci-fi setting. That's, like, literally what the light does. And, I mean, I say that because I feel like what happens is that creatives want to make something realistic. Like, when a car crashes into a car, there's that sound that you hear in, like, movies when they crash into each other. The audio director maybe listen to some cars, and then replicated that audio just perfectly and that's what they put in that Fast and the Furious movie but if you're me 
99.999% of the car crashes I've seen have been in movies, not in real life. And I remember when I was just walking out of a restaurant, I saw a car just bam, ram right into another car that was pulling out of a parking spot. And it sounded exactly like it does in the movie. But because I'd only seen it in movies, it sounded fake. And I feel like this is like really strange phenomenon where the creators made it realistic and it looked crazy, but that's realistic. And then everyone goes, well, actually, no, that's the way it is. And you go, okay, yeah, no, I intellectually understand that. But then you see it or you hear it and you're like, whoa. Whoa. All right. Errors detected. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my... Alright, this is the game. Turn it off and turn it back on again. Turn it off and turn it back on again. IT, the game. Nice work. Looks like we're back online. Ready when you are. Nice. Oh, that audio, yeah. Ah, just as stunning as I remember it. Let's get our bearings and find where we left off. Ooh, some jazz. Oh. Revisit levels. Huh. Did they have the collider this time? Maybe. So that one's busto. So now I'm going to go back to here. This is where I was. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure the solution is this. I'm not going to do any more limit testing. I'm just going to go. <laughs> okay. I fucking blasted the destination. Here's an achievement. Fuck you, says the game. Dude. Literally, if I wanted someone to congratulate me on failing, I would, like, go to work. Like, I would not open up your game, okay? Like, I am trying to get away from this right now. All right. Back, back. All right. Let's see if I can do this shit. Photos are back to normal, too. Excellent. Should be smooth sailing from here. Hopefully. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right. Oh. Now, when I played Sekiro, this is where an entirely new zone was. Hmm. Infinitely recursive patios. Damn. Yeah, no, I too shop at Home Depot. Wasn't that sticky note? What sticky note? There was no sticky note. There was no sticky note. Where's the sticky note? Where's the sticky note? Where's the sticky note? Where's the sticky note? Sticky? Before the teleporter? Oh, well, I mean, like, I can't, I, I can't help you, Danger Game. Why don't you go 
Why don't, why don't you go buy the game? Huh? How's that for... How's that for a take that? Why don't you go purchase a form of entertainment and enjoy yourself? And read your own sticky notes. What a good little fucking twist. Oh my god, shaders. Ah, oh, shaders. Oh. Oh, <laughs> it's marvelous. I'm gonna die. See, I told you. A heron. Is is this is that when Aaron has an epiphany? He's an aharon. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's a that's a rough name, man. If my name was Aharon, I would be at the courthouse tomorrow morning. I would get that changed right away. <laughs> Unless one of the developers is named Aharon, in which case, what a lovely game. Courthouse is open Monday to Friday. Um, oh, dude, look at that tune shader. I gotta talk to this. The colors. How long did this take you? Now, that would be telling. <laughs> Art should retain some mystery, no? All right. All right. Bees? Not the bees, not the bees. Ah. Uh. Shaders. Are you? I found it. Now this was a funny one. <laughs> hmm. Not your usual style. You could say I was stretching my creative muscles. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, that's pretty cool. Dude, this is the this is the same art style as Dragon, a game about a dragon. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna show you this. I gotta show you this. This is coming up. I purchased this game this morning, so I gotta make sure I don't have like my credit card info. Oh wait, no, this is on Steam that I'm opening up. Hold on, let me. Where's uh, a game about a dragon? We, I present to you, Dragon, a game about a dragon. This game, it's like two bucks. Look at it go. Yeah, the, the, this individual literally like crayon colored the entire game. And I, I, uh, I've I learned of this game twice. Where fight unique bosses, hell yeah. Yeah, like, I learned about this game twice. First, uh, I just was looking up games about dragons. Because I think dragons are cool. And I found this game. Uh... And the fact that this was done, like, in crayon, where <laughs> it's just, like, scanned crayon images, I've never seen this before. But second of all, uh, I think it was this game that showed up in, like, a game dev subreddit, where everything was in one class. The entire game is a single class with a lot of functions and variables. And so, like, anytime I see crayon art, my brain is like, this was managed by one class. That's, and, and, and the dev was just like, I don't, I didn't know you're, you weren't supposed to do that. Like, I mean, it works. And it's kind of one of those things where it's like, yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you are, that dev sat down and was like, I'm going to use one class and crayons and made a game that's on Steam. That's, that's incredible. That's amazing. Oh yeah, for any of you who don't know what a class is, let's just talk about programming a little bit while we look out here. So here's what a class is. There is this idea in programming of wanting things to live in separate places. And when I say separate places, if you don't code, think of them as different files. So for instance, let's say you have a class that is Mario. 
This controls things like if you hit the A button, it will make Mario jump. This says where the position of Mario is. Some of graphics Mario, uh, uh, graphics of Mario. That all lives in the Mario class. And then over here, we have the enemy class, uh, which might just handle how it navigates the space. It might handle how it receives and deals damage. We might have a third class that is a floor tile that doesn't have damage, that doesn't receive inputs. It's just floor. And so the idea of different classes in your engineering is that you want to logically separate things because then it becomes easier to just logically do stuff with. Ah, man, this enemy's moving too fast. I want to slow it down. You just go look at, like, the enemy class. Now, by the way, for any coders, I know I'm not... I'm kind of melting what an object in the class is together, but that that's fine. Now, imagine if you had one file, one spot, that controlled floors, Mario enemies, all of it is just all in one thing. Um, it's good stuff. So so we are lit, we are inside the world of Dragon. A game about a dragon. Oh, shit. I, is this... So is this how the developers of Dark and Darker are distributing the game now? My goodness, that court case must be going poorly. Um, all right, well, let's just open up the game here. Oh, shaders. We got aliasing. Ugh. For any of you that feel like this hurts your eyes, I want you to know that for 10 years as a child, this is what television and games felt like. Your mind is limitless. This was fun. Few things make me happier than when you say that here. Aharon! Alright, we're looking for a photograph. More PS1 wiggle textures. What in the fuck? Oh god, is it really easy and obvious and dumb? Open up! Oh, it was really easy and obvious and dumb! Fuck! Oh! Alright. Let us proceed. Let me do it nice and slow so you can really see the aliasing. Isn't that just painful? I wish to go up. Crab losses have never really understood what aliasing and vertical sync are. Uh, uh, hold on, my mind just it, it broke a little bit because we're here now, so maybe that area downstairs is now open. Nice. Okay, so, so, uh, vertical sync. So, l let, let's imagine that this is a monitor, okay? But it's not a very high-resolution monitor. In fact, it's 4 by 6. So here we have the division of pixels on the screen. So, um... If you are doing something, like... Okay, so so how does, how does this pixel get rendered as red? What actually happens? Well... First, there needs to be computations done to determine what that color should be. Um, and then once that computation is done, then it can be placed. And so one way to draw these pixels is you just, like for instance, in a really early graphics um, sense, you would say, 
I have something that is computing what a pixel is, but it can only compute what the pixels are one at a time. So do this and then display it. Do this and then display it. Do this and then display it. Do this and this and this and this, right? This is an example of um, doing these pixels one at a time, left to right. So there is another way of doing this, which is that you do a row, you, you compute the pixels of a whole row, and then you put the rows in, and then you do another row, then you put the rows in, and you, then you do this, and then you put another row in. So if you are doing something like this, if here is, I will make um, brown, here is what, what last frame was, and then green is this frame. The ideal would be that you have all of these here and then all at once, you just replace it with new frames, right? But sometimes what winds up happening, if you are doing something like drawing one line at a time, you might have something like the new frames or the, the pixels for our for this frame have only been drawn in the top half. We just haven't gotten around to doing these yet, so you still see the pixels from the last frame. And so as a result, you'll have things where you will have, let, let's imagine that I'm rotating my camera to the right in Counter-Strike. Let's say I'm rotating, oh, I'm sorry, color blindness. Yeah, let me try to do let me do red and blue. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We have some... Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Let, let's do... Let's do blue and red. So this is last frame. And then we're going to go next. Oops. Next frame. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay, so here's the next frame. And then this is going to be this. So, again, let's say you're rotating your camera in a game of Counter-Strike. You might wind up with something where the top half has moved a little this way, but the bottom half hasn't. And so it'll literally look like there's sort of two images sitting on top of each other, kind of doing this. And that's called tearing. So... If you say to your computer, hey, whatever you do, if we have last frame, I want vertical sync. I want to make sure that there's no sort of weird tear vertically. And so vertical sync is trying to say, let's make sure that that happens, where when we have the next frame, we boop, put it all in at the same time. Now. And again, for those of you that are more technically understanding of this concept, I am making a lot of real generalized statements. Um, some of which are slightly incorrect, but that's fine. I mean, that's, that's basically that. So so we've talked about that. We've talked about that. Let's talk about aliasing. Let's talk about aliasing. Let's go ahead and reclaim these. Missed one. So the idea of aliasing is this. So... Um, let's imagine that we have made a game where there is going to be, I'm going to put it in gray. Our game has a building that is in gray and here's the edge of the building. So let's draw in gray. What it would look like in real life. So if we had our building in our game and we brought it into real life, we looked at it, here is how it would be shaded. But remember, these boxes represent pixels on the screen. So if this is your line, let's actually draw the line in red so it's really, really clear that here is the border of our building. What do the pixels do? Here's a simple way where we could say, 
uh, uh, color the pixels based upon this being the border, we could say, well, any pixel that contains any part of the building is fully colored. Any pixel that contains any part of the building is colored. And so what you'll, what you'll note is that we get this really jagged edge that is around here. Right? And so this looks a lot, oh yeah, I already moved away from the screen. This is what that effect was that you saw in the other um, sort of PS1 era looking game. You saw these sort of jaggedy edges. So then what happens is um, when you move a little bit, let's suppose that here's where the red line is at time one, and here's where the red line is at time two, you wind up with these really harsh moments where this just suddenly pops away. So you get this kind of effect of this sort of very like stuttery that just visually looks very harsh. And so th there are techniques called anti-aliasing where someone says, ooh, this looks really harsh. You know what? Let's actually, where's this color black? Let's actually back off from it a little bit. Add the custom colors, okay. Let's add a color. Let's say that if a, um, if a part of our building is fully contained within this, let's maybe do something on the border. Where again, remember, the entire pixel needs to be the same color. Oops, I guess I use this color. So like, in this situation, we, we did a, and again, it's very conceptual. This is not like, this is literally what's happening, but like conceptually we can say, hey, let's just say if this building is mostly inside of the pixel, we'll color it bright. If it's not mostly in, Let's just kind of add a little kind of in-between color because then it'll it, it'll just look smoother visually speaking. So th these are approaches that people will take. And I, I, I'm gonna mess up this statement, but like aliasing in general is when you have things of different frequencies that don't line up. So you might have like a signal that's 30 Hertz and a signal that's 31 Hertz because those don't line up, you, you get a, a, the general notion of aliasing. So you can have audio aliasing, you can have visual aliasing, but when it comes to gamers, if you see chunky, blocky, shitty looking stuff, we call that shit aliasing. <laughs> All right, uh, for those of you that are interested in correcting errors in what I described, feel free to talk amongst yourselves in chat. All right, new level. Oh God, we're entering into a vaporwave realm. Uh oh. And we, we hear. Well, gee, what's up there? Oh, it's literally those. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think this is wrong. I, I literally forgot what the orientation was. Nice. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, 
Oh man. This is very pleasing to play. All right, let's let's see. Let us divine. All right, is this a All right, it is Euclidean space, right? Oh, we got Monduck. Oh, dude, fuck yeah, man. Oh, I'm killing the Monduck game. So I think I rewind back to here. What if I... Ah, oh, shit. Huh. Huh, I'm not sure what to make of this. Alright, what did I miss? What did I miss? I see. Let me double check. Last time I was here, I just literally missed a picture. Non interactables, non interactables. All right, great. Okay, so I think that what I want to do. Really good. I think I want to get that photo. What the fuck? Okay, is, is there like an exit on top of one of these fuckers? Same photo? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I want I want to try to get over here and, like, grab this. I'm just going to briefly see if there's anything in the upside down land. Or anything down here. here somewhere okay all right I I've, I've been I've been demanded I've been demanded hello hello all right what do you think the field of view is in this game it's 90 guys I love you 
You have to smell, smell my head. Yep, stabilize. Yep, all right. Dig your claws in a little bit. That feels fine. Uzi from those odd turns. Yeah, I mean, the, I have my field of view turned up to what's comfortable for me. Hey, 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 stop. Hey, hey. What in fuck? What? Dude, no, dude. Dude, dude, don't chew on my possessions. Yeah, I got mom duck and I got no duck, and that does suck. Okay. Come on. Ugh. I gotta do this on my face. Alright, let's do this. All right, so I'm, I'm going to do something that maybe I... Ouch. Maybe I don't need to do. Do I have to get back up there? I want to see what's up here. come from? Oh, I blasted it. Alright, there we go. So let's see what's up top here. Any teleporters out there? Uh, is this like The Witness? It is nothing remotely like The Witness, outside of the fact that they happen to be both puzzle games. I feel like I maybe need to just get up there, and that's what this puzzle is. So what, what, what is up there? So I'm gonna like look around these objects to see if there's anything that's kind of outside of the photo that I can't see. All right, I'm trying to get back here. Okay. So if I do this to a line. Wait, what, can I? Do we just go infinite? Like, I'm, I'm confused. Can I just get all the way up on up? So this lets me make a little bridge. And 
upward pointed bridge. And what is up here? Oh, hell yeah, there's nothing up here. Oh, hell yeah, there's fucking nothing here. Okay. Excuse me, Twitch, I can't imagine how long it took to design the player's constraints for this game. Well, they very smartly start you on an island with empty space on all sides, which was probably necessary for what they needed to do. Chocolate bar. Here's the thing. So I've been going down this right path. I'm going to do this one now. And I don't think there's anything on these either sides, but I'm just going to make myself, I'm going to throw myself off just to see. Is there something on the side? Yeah, I can't even. What's the objective? We're trying to find the exit to the level. It appears to be buried somewhere in these. And you know, th there's something that's just tickling my nerd sense, which is wh why is the staircase here? Perhaps there's something up here that I just simply missed. Oh, this is so interesting. All right. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. So here's when I was placing this thing. And actually, let me, let me, is there anything unusual here? It doesn't exactly look like it. I'm gonna, oop, not that one. I'm gonna do this. And here's the one that I wanna grab. I wanna grab this and I wanna turn this sideways. Haha, -ha, fuck yeah. Oh my god, yes. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, that feels so good. Oh, my God. All right, so some thoughts. I kind of think that when it comes to puzzly games, a lot of the times... Players don't actually want puzzles. Like, that required some exploration more than anything. Because there's, there's a kind of, like, really hardcore 
logic type puzzles. Like what you'd see on Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs> Is this a hub world? Is that what is being communicated to me? That I'm in the herb? Oh my god, Belial Azazel. This is a long time YouTube watcher just checking in I chat. Belial Azazel, what is fucking up? So we've done all of these puzzles here. Belial says, work is rough, but life is good. Lost over 170 pounds after bariatric surgery. Oh my God. Dude, I mean, that's, that's, that is, because I'm 250, that is a substantial portion of me. Is this what the check mark means? I wonder what this weird effect means. All right, so I'm now on the hunt for more puzzles. I'm less half the person I was in mass. Man, that's awesome, congrats. What? Chest seems a lot hairier than usual. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. What a good cat. Oh, he's such a little good chest hair replacement. Alright. Time to the continue the hunt. I have collisions yet? Wow, it literally removes control from me. Aha! So I haven't completed this. Needs two batteries. Is that? <laughs> oh, it must be. A photocopier. Well, test it out. Ah. Uh. Ah. All right. I actually like, put the photo back. Ever since that argument, Hiraya has seemed rather down. I, I know she means well, but Marin pushed it too far. There must be something I can do to cheer Hiraya up. Maybe design a new possible flower. Oh, that would be lovely. We can sketch it together over some tea. Favorite puzzle game, asks Roger Brown. That is an interesting one. Whoa. Favorite puzzle game. I liked Antichamber. I liked The Witness. Let 
me go to my list. All right. Excuse me, sweetheart. Ten out of ten. Hmm. That's tough. Yeah. So, so here's my list of ten out of ten puzzle games: Lemmings, The Witness, Antechamber, Deadly Rooms of Death, The Talos Principle, Flow. Portal, Baba is You, Intelligent Cube, and Minesweeper. And of that list, pro, mm, prop. Mm, see, here's the thing. This is this is why I put ten out of tens instead of where my favorite is. <sighs> On second thought, why don't I write this one down? I mean, maybe Deadly Rooms of Death is actually number one. Oh, shit, it's a duck. Oh, we got Ducky 2. Let's go. Fuck yeah. Oh, we got... Oh. <laughs> uh, uh. first yeah yeah deadly rooms of death is a game that like no one's ever heard of i was kind of expecting return of the Ober den that's under my graphic adventure games 10 out of 10 water doesn't need to have a smell i couldn't stop thinking about this while watching haraya tend to her plants today there's an addictive quality to this place that makes up for the inaccuracies that surround us when we come here out of thin air we create beauty that t tickles some but not all of our senses. Strictly speaking, the code we create is a technical marvel, and designing new structures thrills me like nothing else. But the novelty of it all makes it easy to forget what a real flower smells like. I don't want to forget. Is this list public? I have chosen not to make it a public list. Oh, shit, we got a cat. Oh, shit, we gotta pet this cat, man. There's the teleporter. Oh. So far away. All right. Well, first things first. I'm going to photocopy it two times. know if I need to use the photocopier all Dude, I'm petting this fucking cat oh shit Oh my god, where'd he go? Oh, he's back! Fuck yeah. Fucking fuck, man. Oh, he, he just shows back up. Come back. Where, where is the cat? Oh, 
Shit, I can't jump pet him. I can't jump pet the cat. Fuck. Ugh. He's fucking... He's there! Oh, shit. Fuck, he just keeps... You know, maybe this is perfect. I want to pet you. Why can't I pet this fucking cat? Why can't I pet this fucking cat? Why can't I do it? Why can't I pet this cat? He's right here. He's looking. He's looking right at me. What is going on with this cat? I want to pet this cat. Come on. Look, I'm, here you go. That's, that's really nice. Love petting this cat. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Give yourself some scratches, it's fine. Ooh, that's not the button I want to press. Speed tech on this game is going to be insane, dude. Anarch Illusorist, that is going to be a true mind melter, I think. I wonder what else this is. No, what's that? That looks interesting. Let's check it out. Well, as someone who was playing Firmament on Monday. I must admit, I'm surprised you made it this far. It's Kate Sith! It's Seth. been a while since someone's wandered around this place. And it's good to have you. There's plenty of things to do here. Have you finished exploring? The train will take us to Haraya's station. A place where science and art meet nature. Alright, I can't actually pet you. Oh, hub completed a Haran. Whoa! Next. Araya. Haran was a brilliant designer. All the lovely artistic elements you see are all thanks to his handiwork. Though his colleagues were just as amazing in their own right. Their work was always said to change the world. Or so they said. <laughs> Often. I'm Kate, by the way. An artificial record keeper developed by Mirren to maintain this place. I'll be here to assist you in any way that I can. And I look forward to seeing what wonders you discover. I like Kate, Seth. Glad to find out that's how they got around. Whoa, is that a tree? Oh, yeah. Sick. Is that a tree? What's a tree? Oh, yeah. Stand up. Couple more reps. Couple more reps. Couple more reps. These are sick. Wonder if the founder here knew how to rock. <laughs> yeah, um... Where's my applause? I'm sitting down. This must be the next set. Maybe we'll find out more about the work being done in this area. This is pretty as fuck, man. 
Sit button, but no pad button? Yeah, dude, this sucks. <laughs> Game gets a one. <laughs> so I now understand. So this is the hub. I can wander around the hub and I can look at stuff. And these are spokes from the hub. I don't know what that symbol means. How much honor points to pet the cat? Zero. Dude, look at this pie. I gotta remember that things are horrible outside. H2 at X1. Huh. Alright, I'm going in. I'm diving in. Okay, here we go. Th that fly sound really bothers me. Because I can't see the flies. Alright, I can't interact with that. I'll never take the art of a walk. Oh my god. Yep. 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 I've seen this mechanic a lot. I really like it almost every time. Hey, Glake Dong guy. Thanks for the 10 gifted right. subs on this lovely Thursday. Dude, Gleek Dawn, how's your Thursday going? It's good to see you. Sleep more. Oh, do I need perhaps some elevation? Oh. Leon, guys, this is great. I'm enjoying. I'm just relaxing, enjoying the day. Dude, that is my goal for Sunday. I just want to do nothing all Sunday. I want to be a complete and total piece of shit. That's actually kind of nice. It actually lightly forces you into position. Beep. Oh, thank God. You answered. Uh, it's me. I don't know how it happened, but somehow I lost direct communication with you. Live comms don't seem to be working where you are. Hmm. That should be fine, though. We can talk using this method. Operator. You pick up. I'll try to leave voicemails if you can't. I've been monitoring your vitals in the system, so I'll keep you posted as you wander along. Good luck in there. Okay, let's solve our next set of alignment puzzles. Here we go. What is this? All your hard work is like this moment. We're going to change the world. Interesting, interesting. All right, what, what looks, what looks unusual? Oh, let's listen to this. Ah, these are interesting.
interesting experiments. And I like that they're relying on creativity. <laughs> There's a lot of creativity in nature. Unexplainable things that uproot themselves and find purchase. I'll make sure to keep an eye out and see how this experiment might blossom. What? I can't stop drawing on here. Wow, it, it, this game has built in MS Paint. That's amazing. Okay, let's see if I can let's see if I can pull this off. Yeah, this this is when I should have talked about vertical sync and screen tearing, huh? Hold on, hold on. Messed up. Uh, so, quick question for chat. Do we want white, red, green, or blue? Green? Gleeton Guy says green, you got it. Damn, I ran out of space. <laughs> Damn it. I need to give myself more room. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh. All right. Looks like a frog. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. It was a frog. We're drawing a nice green frog. So first, let's draw the frog's body. Here's his head. And let's draw his little legs that are on the... Ah, oh, shit. I, oh, he's got blue balls. <laughs> Damn it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're actually... This is, this is, this is a good frog. Okay, hold on. Ah, oh, shit. I'm erasing. Ah, oh, fuck. Hold on. Let's just draw the... <laughs> Fucking hell. This is... This game's really hard. All right, hold on. All right, there's his wing. Shit. There's his eye. And he's got, actually, you know what he has? He has a red tongue. Yo, that's a pretty good frog. For this control mechanism? What's a frog's favorite restaurant? Oh, uh, you know, Applebee's. Oh shit, I unplugged. Oh, sign it? Oh, that's a great point. I shouldn't I shouldn't go anywhere unless I sign it. Oops. Alright, so let me do my There's S. <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> and then here's the P. All right, that's good. Let's 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 move on. Oh, I see. Aha, I see. This is a cute puzzle, because you need to blast your way through there, but the game wants to make sure that you blast starting from here. Oh, 
Oh, my, my art! My art! Seeing you walk around this place brings back memories. Where's that cat? Oh, yeah. Yeah, all right. All right. Yes. Yes. Yeah, she's got she's got a good little pouchy there. Well, she lost a lot of weight, and that's when her pouch became real exaggerated, and she has been horking food since then. At some point, we must realize that what we build with our hands is not enough. But to truly bring something to life, we must breathe life into it ourselves. Of course. <laughs> there is no life in calculations on a board or in numbers on a screen. Really? But there's life in our hands. The way we hold. The way we care. Uh -huh. Brainstorming. How to use our screen printing and mural successes. Mural orchards. Mirin. Dream big but remain practical. Paradox. Strawberries. Windowsill. Code and wheel. When we, we can apply back home. Right? Code. Biochar. Soil variants. She didn't look happy. Uh-oh. All right. But doesn't two pair beat three of a kind? Not in five card draw. Nor in Texas Hold'em. Uh, there are no Texans here. I fail to see why we should play by their rules. Hmm, it's more about statistical rarity than culture, I believe. Yeah, you know, a mass thing. Just to speed. Who needs to bluff when you can count cards? When you put it that way... Who I needs to bluff when you can count cards? <laughs> Alright. Brilliant, isn't it? Where are you? Where is this fucking cat, man? All right, that's where one is, and the third one is... Huh. Just walk around like this. Really, is this it? Just pulling levers? one is around this way. What are, what are these for? What are these cards for? What are these cards for? cards for all right i'm bringing the cards with me we're leaving the experiment with them i feel like there's a secret level or something there that I mean, that, that feels like, there should totally be a level there. Like, 100%. Alright. Alright. Hello. Can't pet that cat. That's what I've learned. Don't get yourself excited. It'll end in disappointment. Roger bounces. Maybe there's something behind them. Get me out of here. How do I leave this level? Oh, I have to solve it. Ugh. Hey, Leffowins, 10 gifted subs. Holy shit, Leffowins. Happy Thursday to you. How are you doing, Leffowins? 
Phase two. More vermiculite. Volatile material minerals for the next round of biochar tests. The left ones, thank you for the kindness. My dream is too practical and my plans are too dreamlike. Mirren said as much to me the other day when I joked that if the master hard drive goes up in smoke, we'll always have our memories. It doesn't take us along for the ride. Personally, I found my excellent double pun to be funny. She was not amused. Left one says, I'm sending my game to the printer. Thank you for keeping my digital company while working all over the years, dude. Fuck yeah, Level Ends! Dude, Level Ends, tell us about your game. I know we're playing a game, but we're done with this. It's all about you right now. I will keep reading in the meantime. Uh, it's just as well that there's no winning a game of words with her. A long time ago, I learned the only results, only results can make a certain type of person pay attention. Luckily, biochar experiments are going better than... Soon I'll have interesting findings to share. Now, if I can just stabilize my soil variables, the loop I program might have a chance of crossing over into our world. All right. What's biochar? Someone tell me what biochar is, man. Is that the camera side? I bet it's the camera side. Holy shit. Oh my god. Get ready, I marketers. Their name is Melanie. Oh, that's so good. Is more playful work. Oh shit. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, oh, what a good cat. Oh, there you go. Influences biochar is what happens when Bioware and Charizard have a child. <laughs> oh, sit there. Oh, shit. Stand up. Hmm. E.K. Hawkman says biochar is a soil amendment that is essentially organic material that is burned in certain conditions. It adds soil carbon and can increase plant productivity. Ah. ah. Left one says it's a complete card game that is inspired by Cube and pulls in elements of putting the character focus of EDH. You select a champion that, that has a passive effect. You are limited to only producing mana of your champion's identity to restrict options. Oh, sweet. So it's kind of like, uh, if I understand it, it might be like there's those LCGs where you just purchase the box and you have all the cards available for when you purchase it, but then you assemble via some sort of drafting structure. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Always. I've been running these biochar experiments for a few days now. Every time I think I finally achieved the perfect soil composition and rotation. As soon as I mimic future climate conditions, be sure to catch my good my side. Work right. falls apart. It's disheartening, but not enough to slow me down. There must be something I'm missing. Maybe, maybe I can talk to Mirren about it. I just didn't pick this up, huh? One or two? I, I am gonna... Excellent shot. I think it's working me up to freeform camera ing. I think I, I think I understand. Let's look around. We have a thing there. We need two. Nothing's there. All right, 
right, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to first take a photo. We're going to pick that photo up. So we, we just grab this. Actually, let me just briefly go back to before that was. Is there any goodies over there? Is there like a duck? Hold on. I gotta see if there's a duck. I feel like she long, but I have a solution to this. Ay, ay, ay. This mess of my own making. Alright. He must know what Mira has been working on. Squirreled away in her own little corner. Maybe I can find a way to help. That might put us back on good terms. Mending relationships often felt harder for Haraya than tending to her plans. I wonder why she always put in the effort despite that. Oh, yeah. Dude, yes. That's quite the clever solution. Thank you. Mm, 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 mm. Ship it. Oh, I feel so good whenever I feel like I solved a puzzle. What brought you here to the simulation? Not that I mind company. On the contrary, really. Oh, left one says, I yes, it is like that. It says, fun. quiet, Kate. It says, uh, the part that I like the most is that it uses a version of rowing mana, where you can exchange a card in hand for a resource that matches that card's identity. You can only convert cards that match your champion's identity. It provides a significant amount of mana consistency, prevents you from being able to access other essences uh, with that portion of the mana system. Ah, nice, nice. There are actual resource cards to play if you want to overcome the mana restriction, leading to trade-off between power and consistency if you want to buy it. Ooh. I would do whatever maximizes gambling potential. Alright, so let's see. There's the exit. And so we can photograph. But that's behind us. So perhaps there is some sort of reflective surface that I can put here. And Merrick says, hey, Day 9, you've been a small good piece of my life for a long time now. I just want to say thank you. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by and saying nice words. I love, I love when people just come by and say nice shit. It's so great. Well, I remember this. Araya once told me that there's power in nurturing something. I'm uncertain by what she meant. But you seem to have a handle on things. Huh. Oh, shit. I made a path. Shit. Needs to be a huge hole. Okay, that'll do. Oh my. Oh! The hole needs to be bigger! No, it doesn't. It's, it's a fixed size. Okay, I see. I see. It is a fixed size every time. So if I do it like this, this should blast this side, and then I can walk around like that. Nope, just still still not getting it right. If it's too close, I can't squeeze through. It's too far, and I also can't squeeze through. Oh, shit. So it's facing...
Gotcha. Bang and Jeff says you smell very nice. Thank you for that. It's incredible. I agree with you. Your assessment is spot on. I was being genuine earlier. I'd like to I'd like to okay, bye. Excuse me, I have puzzles to solve, fucking nerd. Alright. Let us find what to do. Ordered gazing. Got it. Let's see what else is here. Let's see a photo. So I need to make sure that this ground is solid. So let's go ahead and align. Oh, this one was a quickie. Speed Rand. Speed Rand. What up, Jessica? Hey, you answered. Jessica! I've been trying to look ahead, but the simulation is a bit of a maze. You're the only one that can navigate it. If I were to I'm guess, a chosen though, one. what remains of all their research should be scattered around you. And if I were a delicate machine that could solve climate change, I'd be deep in a lab somewhere. Anyway, I'll do my best out here. Find that machine, all right? I'm cheering you on. All right. A delicate machine? Something to do with climate? Ah, oh, that sounds familiar. Good cat. Very good cat. Every time my cats talk about climate change, they also get pat pats. Yeah, actually, loved ones. When, 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 where, when, and where is your game purchasable, and why, <laughs> and how? The problem is that my plants are dying, so they don't die without being told to do so. I wish that I could set foot in this place to find a dead flower awaiting my return. The results of my experiments live in the dozens of file archives I've made here, I'm handing over all documentation of soil failures to Chi Lung so they can see the bigger picture. As usual, I fear my best work will only show itself in my conclusion. Chi Lung is my hope that this won't have to be the case. The world isn't a world without cycles we can't control. Alright. Payne Dota says, hey Sean, hope you're liking the game. I felt like I would have liked a bit more challenge with the levels. Would you agree? Oh, Payne Dota, that's an interesting question. Get a nice view and let's talk about this shit. Let's not look at that thing because it's loud. Oh, hey, this is where I'm supposed to go. All right, so like, I think difficulties and uh, difficulty in games is like a really, really, really interesting conversation because, like, you know, there's often in media certain pain and problems and inconveniences that it is satisfying to see them overcome. Like a bully in a movie who's a jerk eats shit at the end of the movie, and it's very satisfying. If someone was really nice in the movie, and then they like, you know, tripped down a stairwell and broke their ankles, you'd be like, oh my God, and the credits are all like, oh, oh. So, something like Challenge, I've made this argument for the Souls games before, that the, the difficulty plus a few other things that are sitting alongside it work together to accentuate the feeling of triumph. Um, the idea that the environment is really rich and really beautiful, and if you could run through it, you wouldn't notice all these things. You wouldn't need to notice all these things. 
So the beautiful, intricate environments you must pay attention to in order to succeed at the incredibly difficult combat. And so you're paying attention to this beautiful, intricate environment, which allows you and gives you the opportunity to, and you are forced to, appreciate its design. And then you skillfully overcome the combat. And then what, what do you receive? A reward of a new beautiful place or a new awesome enemy or an awesome boss and these unique, ever-changing, glorious levels. It's awesome. All these things together give a sense of triumph. Now, let's imagine that we had a Dark Souls game that was one long hallway. We have one long hallway and there's just a difficult enemy. And I beat a difficult enemy, oh, next one. Beat that difficult enemy, oh, next one. And just endlessly do that. And it's just like a rectangular plain hall that stretches for 60 hours. I actually don't think that that would feel nearly as satisfying because I don't really have to pay attention to any other environment. I don't have to appreciate any cool design. There's no reward for beating an enemy. It's just another difficult enemy. So in that sense, I think that though the Souls games, if you made them incredibly trivially easily, or incredibly trivially easy, it would ruin that satisfying, fun feeling of triumph. Though it would ruin that, I don't think that difficulty is the core thing. I think it's one of a number of things sitting next to each other. And so when you ask the question, hey, I, I want this game to, I, I could have used slightly harder puzzles. A bunch of things kind of enter into my brain. Um, we're like, hey, what is happening right now? This sense of wonder and amazement. And none of the puzzles have really made me go, what? That's so hard. How does that work? Ugh. Oh my god. Um, you, you just rotate some stuff, some shit falls out, and it's like really cool. So like, you know, this in, in this kind of game, this mechanic creates a sense of awe and like holy shitness. And it feels like they are leaning in hard to that. They're trying to make you feel a sense of amazement at this amazing mechanic. And these puzzles feel like more opportunities to explore how amazing the mechanic is. It doesn't actually feel like puzzly, intellectually stimulating and challenging to where I need to understand all these rules and by understanding the rules and how they track better, I can then showcase my understanding by solving things. There's this really interesting puzzle game called Understand. And uh, it's inspired from The Witness, inspired by The Witness, I never know the right article, um, where there are symbols on a tile grid and you're looking to draw a line through that tile grid to satisfy it, but there's no rules uh, that are explained to you. There's no text, it's just level one, two, three, four. And generally the first few levels are trying to teach you how it works, and then the fourth level is like a challenge. And so there's all these twists where you'll get later in that game, and it'll be like, you beat level one, two, three because you get it, and then level four, you're just completely wrong. And you realize that the way that you probably understood it before was subtly incorrect. So then you start to experiment in levels one, two, and three, and realize that there's multiple solutions, and those multiple solutions wouldn't be true with your first understanding of the rules, so maybe you need to re-understand it in a different way. Ah, let's see. That feels like something that satisfies and tickles that intellectual, like, thinky, ooh, I need to really put in some brain work to solve this. And I think that's kind of like an interesting spread in puzzle games. I think that, like, um, I played the puzzle game Humanity uh, a few weeks back, and I thought it was just lovely. I thought it was just awesome. And that felt like what I just described, like that game Understand, where it's trying to intellectually challenge you and make you think and evaluate the space and stuff like this. And I think that if these developers were to go back in time to the start of their development where they've just nailed this mechanic, I think it would make sense for them to choose the let's make a lot of difficult puzzles path. But I think that a lot of other things need to be built around that to support that. 
And I, I think this kind of just goes as a feeling overall in games. A lot of games, there's one thing that feels like a focus. And you can imagine dialing up or dialing down that thing. You can imagine, like for instance in Dark Souls, the difficulty is that thing. Oh, it's all about the difficulty. So I think it should be tuned down so that way I can access the fun. It's like, no, it's actually, that would ruin the game. Not because it itself is difficulty, but because it's like the difficulty paired with the environmental design, paired with the reward, paired with all these other structures, combined with how the progression works. If you took an RPG that had a, like a really upward scaling, like like you got exponentially more powerful, it would be astonishingly difficult to give it the same difficulty feel as Dark Souls. So suddenly, the difficulty of combat and the combat mechanics intersect with the progression mechanics in a way that makes something totally different. I'm getting slightly off track. My point is, I think that... Whoa, what the fuck are we doing here? I think my point is that many games are about the relationship of, let's say, five to ten systems all working together to create a particular feeling. And some of them are way more apparent than the other ones. Like a car might have a beautiful, sleek design on the outside and might be comfortable to drive in, and that's what you see. But the engine that you can't see is what's making it go. And I think this is true for a lot of games. Like, um, I remember uh, um, I was playing a bunch of RTS games in June. I was playing stuff? Fuck off. Um... I was playing a bunch of RTS games, like I was playing Beyond All Reason, uh, played Age of Empires 2, played Rogue Command. And, you know, there's a lot of interesting conversations about RTS that happened during that month on this stream, where, for instance, there was this RTS game called uh, Grey Goo, where, like, one of the factions just didn't really have base building. And I've seen many... RTS is to try to make it easier by having automated and simplified base building. So that way you can focus on the real thing that RTS games are, which is the unit control. And then it kind of feels boring. It just feels really quite bland. Ah. There's something about the relationship of having a base with a relationship of managing some units, with managing some other things that all together makes it feel rts -y. Or uh, in the Souls games, you know, I was talking about difficulty, environmental design, all these things working together to give it a sense of triumph that's being, like, elevated. And I think that, that it's, like, a interesting critical choice for, like, a puzzle game. Do you want to go down the intellectually thinky-tough side? Do you want to go down the wonder and amazement and awesomeness side? I'm trying to think of some other examples of this. Um, oh open world games you have the ability to explore all these different areas so it's the so wouldn't it be great to just allow even more freeformness even more ability to go anywhere you want so one um open world game that did uh, that said, okay, we want to make this as open as possible, was Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. And to make sure you could go anywhere at any time, all the enemies would scale in level based upon your level. So if you wanted to, you could go straight to the volcano where the dragons were at level one, and you'd be fighting against level one dragons. Or you could go to the simple brook where there's some bandits right by the start of the game, but if you went there 40 hours into your playthrough, they'd have, like, fucking huge armor and stuff like this. And the way that it felt is meaningless, because again, it's not just the freedom of exploration. Whereas if you have free exploration and hard areas and difficult areas, plus a progression system, all of a sudden I now want to go explore places. So that way I can progress either in power through my stats or power through getting better items or more spells or more abilities. I, I want to find those places and progress because then that will help me get to that new place that I want to explore. So like this is, this is, this is like, like represents 
another instance of this idea of like it's not just freedom of exploration it's like freedom of exploration plus really hard and really easy areas and lots of variety plus a progression system that meaningfully lets you overcome that other one like all like rarely do these things live in isolation so this is like the longest unnecessarily long answer i could have given to what do i think about the difficulty level of the puzzles in this game um i'm obviously not very deep i'm in world two of some number so you know whether it's like three or five or seven I see. Well, there's three or five or seven, you know. Maybe when I get to world four, amazing things stop happening, and I might have the critique, ah, it felt like it was all about wonder and amazement, and that stopped. Oh, I might be sad. Or it might be that it gets less wondrous and amazing, but the puzzles get hard, and then my brain starts to slowly get pulled away from wonder and amazement into that sort of thinky side of thing, which is which is another option. There's there's lots of games that do that, where like the start of the game is about look how cool and fun using your abilities feels. Blow stuff up. The second half of playing the game is understanding how to min-max your character to be better at succeeding at these fun abilities. So, I don't know. Oh, yeah. So, I've seen this. So, I need a battery. You know. Oh, yeah, because it's right there. All right, I'm I'm really curious. I get it. So the first thing that we do is we're going to take a photo of everything connected properly. So then we're going to pick this fucker up. And we're going to put this battery out here like this, which will break the connection. We'll go ahead and grab this. Set this down. Use this to put this right back where it was. then allows me to put this on here, take a photograph of it to produce a second battery. Oh. Washington, this is Mr. Nine. Thanks for all the great content over the years. Question, any updates on the game studio you're starting? No. No. <laughs> but to give a more, a more plain answer uh, is I think that my life and your life become so much easier the less I say. What a good cat. Because, like, I've made this point before, which is that, like, before gaming us, can I get a shout out, please? Absolutely not. <laughs> oh, man. Like, um, like, 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 look, like, dude. Rochington, pick any genre of game. Pick pick any genre, even if it is a made-up, stupid genre. Teleport to optional challenge? Oh, fuck yeah, I love optional challenges. Let's hear it, Brochington.
Sacrifice was made to achieve the perfect anti establishment eyeliner. Alright, we got we got some other people's favorite games. Fantasy RPG Bullet Hell. Alright, cool. That's great. I've, I've never heard of a fantasy RPG Bullet Hell. But imagine I said, hey everyone, I'm really excited to announce we're working on a fantasy RPG Bullet Hell game. Uh, let me just double check this. There's... So fantasy is kind of a setting. Um, fantasy is not like a game genre, because you can obviously have a fantasy RPG or a fantasy uh, FPS or a fantasy MMO. So it's just, it's like a setting. It's an aesthetic. Then RPG, a lot of different kinds of RPGs. Bullet hell, okay, that's pretty specific. But like, if I said fantasy RPG bullet hell, there's a lot of different ways to imagine... That is tricky as shit, dude. Wait, I'm gonna go back. I mean, right away, when people hear fantasy, they might, fantasy RPG, they might expect the three basic classes of warrior and mage and uh, ranger. And people might then take tidbits of things I say when I'm playing an RPG game to be like, oh, I bet they're doing that in their game. They might begin to get excited about things that I haven't even said. And Bullet Hell, there might be people that hear Bullet Hell and go, oh, those games are hard. Oh, okay, they're making a hard game. I don't like hard games. Whereas I can I can absolutely imagine a very fun, non-intense Bullet Hell game. I can also imagine a, a game that is 95% Bullet Hell and 5% RPG. I can imagine a game that's 95% RPG and 5% Bullet Hell. So, like... All these different people who hear all these different things will begin to discuss and come up with conclusions independently. And I, I, I just think that that's really, really hard to manage. Apple? Fuck yeah. So I like, I like the less is more approach. That's what I'm a fan of. So this, this is actually insanely tricky. I feel like maybe there's something that I'm missing. Because, I mean, I, I look at something like what happened to um, uh, No Man's Sky, where let's, let's ignore all the specific mechanics that were stated that didn't get into the game. If you said, we have a procedurally generated universe with 18 quintillion planets. And you can go to all of them. There's a ton of implications there that, like... There's a ton of implications. Like, there's going to be a lot of space flight, so maybe I'll be able to, like, do a lot of things with my spaceship. 18 quintillion sounds like a lot. I expect all the other systems to be a lot. Right? These are just very instantaneous assumptions that people make without even realizing it. I have no idea how to do anything here. What? That's stupid. Alright, so I just need to figure out a way to align that properly, I guess. So like this. Fuck.
Huh. Did I get it angled all weirdly before? Wait a minute. So if I put it like... If I put this like at a downward facing angle like this... Let's say I just aimed it down like that. And then I took a photo of this. Alright, so I should... So if I now did something like this... Alright, well that that's a potential angle. Such as I take a photograph of the photograph of the thing. Alright, so let me put it up like this now. I even see it. Can't even see it. So, so now I can, like, and I have the same problem as before, and it doesn't matter. All right, but this photographing a photograph thing is interesting. Maybe, maybe I can actually just do it by rotating it twice. That's kind of weird. It intellectually photographs the backside. So how do you know when you've done all the hub things? Completed. She lung towards the workspace of a masterful engineer. See Leung, much like the others, settled in quickly here. The batteries, the teleporters, that's all thanks to his handiwork. Though he wouldn't accept the compliment directly. Alright. I'm sure you'll find something useful here. One step closer to solving an impossible question. Oh, that's Thank beautiful. You. Oh, yeah. Oh, you were going through all the vaporwave colors. Yeah, because coming back to what Pain Dota was saying earlier, like, if there were some really interesting challenge levels, or like a community workshop functioned in some way, that'd be fucking sweet. I think that one of the games that did this like the best was Celeste, where there was the main game that you could play, and then there were the B-side and C-side, and those levels were fucking impossible. And they were fucking impossible. Just looking around. Birds, bird is the other day. All right, I'm gonna go back down to the basic thing. Tuesday Twitch says, uh, while I think the community centered approach is valid, it has its disadvantages. Yeah, like I think that if a developer is working on a game and 
Um, first of all, if a developer's working on a game that's not playtesting, that's fucking bad. <laughs> um, but I think that, like, if you start to say, hey, our game has... I'm just going to make up something. Let's say our game is going to do once a week playtests. Or even once a month playtests. I'm going to say once a week because... I have the mind of a goldfish, and I can only think that far ahead. Um, you have a sort of set of problems. I am not just trying to make a game good. I'm trying to make sure that people are engaged week to week. So what if I hit some sort of design problem that means I'm not going to have anything new for six weeks? Do we shut it down? Well, it might be bad because we have a lot of, like, really hardcore followers who are engaged, and I don't want them to be like, okay, we're on, okay, we're off, okay, we're on, okay, we're off. Like, those sorts of things can be very Do you pickly. hear that? That's all I In can hear. In my memories, I hear singing and laughing. I remember a celebration. Dude, this, this, this AI has terrible we memory. Go take a look? It's in a book. And it's not that, therefore, you know, running a once-week playtest is bad and you shouldn't do it. It's just, like, it has it has this new problem, which is, like, managing a bunch of people and managing their expectations. So, like, let's imagine you're a team and you have, I will call it, uh, you're working on whatever game you're working on. And you present to them... System A, and you're going to add systems B, C, D, and E, but you have a really simple system B, C, D, and E, just like right away. Like, for instance, if we're working on a game like this, you know, hey, we have this viewfinder thing where you can, like, take photos and, like, sort of arrange them around, but we don't have any level tooling, we don't have any world, right? We just have these three levels and that's it, right? Very simple versions of, like, a world. Um... Well done. Thank you, Kate. It's a shame things crumble over time. Only, there's always someone here to fix it. First Si Leung, now you. Thank oh, you. Oh, Si Leung, okay. Like, you heard me have this conversation with Pain Dodo earlier where I was just like, oh yeah, you could take it in the wonder direction, you could take it in the puzzle solving direction. What if in the very first playtest, you're showing this mechanic and some people who are really hardcore go off and design little levels and challenges and a subgroup starts to form that is like, oh my God, we should definitely go in this super hardcore, puzzly, intellectual, difficult direction. And you, the developer, are like, well, actually, I kind of want to go in this more wonder-driven, fun direction. And then, and then you'll have this group going, but like, I really want it to be like this. And then, okay, you can either say no, or you can like try to discuss and explain. But the fact is, if you're early on in some development process and you have like a community involved, there are many correct paths that could be taken. Um, if you said we're going to make a first-person shooter, you could make it more stealthy and sneaky, like a Dishonored. You could make it more, um, you know, run and gun, like an Apex Legends. You could make it more like uh, Counter-Strike. You could make it single-player. You could make it multiplayer. You could make it any version of multiplayer. There's all these different things. Um, And if someone sees your first-person shooter mechanics and says, oh, this would work great in single-player, another person's like, no, it would work great in multiplayer, you could have a great game in each of those categories. You just kind of have to pick one. And you can cause some contention with people. I mean, you can, you can just literally see this if you start going to early access forums and reading um, feedback from, from players. You can just see them going, ah, I just don't like the direction it's going in. And there are several other people there going, well, yeah, but... I like the direction that it's going. In. And then there's this discussion and this debate, none of which is bad, none of which is... A birthday. That's wonderful. A gathering of friends. I love these little events. If my system memory is correct, Celium received quite a unique gift that day. Yeah. None of these things are bad. It's just that it, it takes time. It just takes time. And it's a lot of effort. 
And sometimes it is an effort that can't really be resolved because imagine for a moment there was a game that was fully private in its development process. Um, like, I'm going to take Apex Legends as a great example of it. There was no news, and then it was it was dropped. Now, if I looked at Apex Legends for five seconds and thought to myself, oh, it's that sort of run-and-gun combat, I'm not interested in that, boom, done. And I move on, I, I spent no time, I have no emotional investment, there you go, period, done. But if they had a playtest where they did really slow combat, and that was public, then a playtest where they did really fast combat, and then they did a playtest that had more like Halo-paced combat, you might have three groups of people saying, you need to do it in this exact pace. And suddenly, you've had this group, one of them you're not going to go with, or excuse me, two of them you're not going to go with, one of them you are, whether it's fast-paced, mid-paced, or slow-paced. But a lot of people in the slow-paced uh, shooter community might be, like, writing big essays and giving huge feedback. They're investing time. Um, and I, I might describe it as, like, um, you know, there, there's people that get, they start dating, and one person's like, I don't know if I want to be serious, or I don't know if I, like, you know, just want to keep it casual, like, I don't know. And the other party will be like, well, okay, like, if you don't know, I want to actually have, like, a serious relationship, so... I found it! A camera. Portable and with instant film to boot. There's wow, no a lot of freedom. around here, and a powerful way to store data. I can't wait to see how you use this. I'd use it myself, if I had thumbs. <sighs> and, and so, okay, so then you have this group of people that are disappointed, who might not have wound up playing the final product anyways, but they can then go to their friends and go, oh, yeah, no, like, they, those devs really don't know what they're doing. And then this friend, who never actually took the opportunity to look at the game, hears that and goes, oh, that's too bad, and then they never touch it. You can create these sort of, like, anti-momentum type things. Isn't it incredible? Which, again... Rewinding to get the perfect shot. Too much of that. Not too good for my health. Hi. Car Mungayon. It's your birthday. Hi. No. That sort of stuff is absolutely resolvable. Eating and drinking and dancing. Lots of dancing. I even got my guitar to play. That's a high honor, you know. All right, like, all right. That, that can be repaired, but it just takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. I like it. No, take a bow. You're a pro already. Take four batteries. Super powered. Again, I'm not saying that, like, you know, transparency, bad, privacy, good, or vice versa. Uh, but rather, just like, you know, public community development type stuff so just take a lot of time and a lot of effort to work through. Alright, so I got my little camera, so I get five shots. Alright, so we can walk across that way. Taylor Elementus says, I have a sound bite in my head from someone saying, player bases are excellent at finding problems and terrible at finding solutions. Yeah, no, I, I know Mark Rosewater says that a lot. This camera physics thing that Mirren has proposed is going to make me nauseous. Gravity exists for a reason. Mm. I, I, I think that... I would, I would do it one step weaker than that, which is that players... Uh, let me describe it like this. So players are good at finding issues, but I want to zoom in on the word issue. Something being painful or difficult or bad does not immediately make it painful or difficult or bad. You did not necessarily automatically create badness when you did that. A good example is counter spells in Magic. Magic is a successful ass game. They keep printing counter spells. Some players love those spells so much. Is it true that players can say, I hate counter spells? They're so stupid. Oh, yeah, I can just do this. I was about to really overcomplicate that solution.
And you'll have players who give feedback saying, dude, counter spells are terrible. You get rid of them. I don't even get to play my cards. Why is a card game interesting if I'm never getting to play my cards? This game fucking sucks. Players will give that sort of feedback. So they've identified an issue. And this is why I like to put a little asterisk there, is that like you don't actually have to do anything with feedback sometimes. Hey, another voicemail. <laughs> it's getting harder and harder to reach you. I hope you're doing well. I've been doing my best to track your movements. It's been difficult, though. Possibly some sort of error on my part. I'm going to reach out again soon. Try to answer next time, if you can. Despite this mess, yeah, like, I know you'll be fine. Yeah, I, I like that statement, Potato Elemental. Good at finding that an emotion exists. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, for instance, if I made a puzzle, and a lot of people found the puzzle really difficult and confusing... I need to do anything? I mean, I shouldn't do like this. Honestly, maybe no. Maybe I don't need to do a damn thing because this is an extra special challenge puzzle. So just the fact that like 95% of people complained and 5% got it, I'd be like, fuck yeah, that's awesome, hell yeah. I've been waiting for you. waiting for me so cool and i think that like th there's there's language that people use a lot you know like these people find problems those people find solutions you know people are good at finding what what hurts but not good at fixing it like these these dichotomies and it's just like i i, I think that that kind of like how if you ask chat gpt to take a book and summarize it in a paragraph it would give you something that's not inaccurate but it's not also it's not also going to make you experience the awesomeness of avengers endgame you know for some reason the fact that the cat said he's waiting for me Something else is going on here. I went ahead to search for the machine you're looking for. Most elusive indeed. So it was it's like the only reason you came here. What what does this thing do? Can I stand on him? Come here, Dustin. All right, fuck yeah. He says, we ever play Hearthstone again? I think, I mean, I ignoring any feeling I have about Blizzard Entertainment itself. As a game, I thought it was marvelous, and I also feel like I completed it. Poor Dustin. Doomed to bang into walls for all eternity. <laughs> I can't help but laugh. Hours of entertainment packed into one lime green robot. Right. This is a reminder to patch a step climbing algorithm into this code. After I get other work done. So I don't know if this is the intended solution, but I'm going to do like this. Oh, thought this would line up. See, like, I, I, I just really don't get this zone at all. Cause and I think that this is this is one of the things that I Yeah, I mean like I, I this, I feel like, is a danger of having this just, like, photograph thing, is that there's probably some ways to just break it so plainly. Hang on. Did... did you nick my biscuit? It's like, now I can just... Steal your biscuit. What sort of accusation is that? You did, didn't you? 
I can always ask Kate. Yeah, I mean, it, it like, like, it's almost like the game's suddenly gotten way easier now that I've gotten the superpower. As if it could have gone cold. But if you're gonna kick up a fuss, Kate, can you please run shortbread.exe for our esteemed colleague here? Biscuit. All right. So we need three batteries. God, I think designing levels now that you actually have this seems really, really hard. Because, like, like what I, I don't, I literally don't even understand what the challenge is. Everything keeps breaking. You think in a simulation everything will find a way to maintain itself, but no. It's fine. Keeps me busy. Some peace and quiet. It's like, okay, so what do I do? I... It's like, if I did this... Okay, so I have two batteries. Like, because th this is now, like, super linear, right? There's my three batteries. And then I just need to blow a hole through this wall. Didn't even need that many. All right, so I just take a photo of nothing. Yeah, I mean, like, like this, this. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. This is the first time that I feel like my wonder has been busted a little bit. Because what it, what it feels like is, uh, there's some games in early access that I've played. Or not. Played is an overstatement for the state that they were in, but it was games that had, like, fully destructible terrain. And what it did is just constantly... It was just like, there's an obstacle, and you'd be like, alright, you just, like, shoot a hole through the side of the building and bore a linear path to where you needed to go. I mean, I sometimes even feel that way in Deep Rock Galactic. When I'm the miner, and I'm just like, alright, where do I need to go? Open up my map, and I just fucking drill towards it. And I wonder if it's just that these are introductory levels. Rock and stone. I don't even need three. Done. Did you know that scientists have to spend years developing a method before they're often allowed to share their work? of the simulation. What you can achieve in a year's time can be merely a blink here. Though, that does make perfection tempting. Yeah, like, like I would give this game very high marks up until I got this camera, and now I kind of have, like, a big question mark. All right, great. I have no more photographs to take. These might be useful. I'm working in Ali Wong's workspace today. I've exiled myself to the opposite end to keep the bickering to a minimum. It's quiet here, but a little sparse. I like other builds more. I can hear you. Get back to work. Fine. I won't bother you anymore. Verbally, at least. Yeah, like, like th these levels are becoming incredibly quick to solve now. 
Mahjong tile three. Oh, yeah! <laughs> we out? Did we run out of juice? All right. I got your little cord here, buddy. Don't even, don't even stress about a thing. Well, thanks, everyone. Thanks for tuning in today. Thank you so much. Venture says, I wonder if there's a bunch of optional hidden stuff that you're missing. I mean, so first of all, it could be that that is the case. But, um... So I'll delineate between expectation and reality. Like, the... The way that the game has set my expectations, it says, here is a hub world. You go to a hub world, and then there are several sets of levels and an optional set. Um, that's it. Ah, I see. And, and because of that, like, the game has presented this idea of, nope, you, you have done everything that you couldn't be doing. Now, if there's hidden secret stuff, great. I'm a big fan of secrets. So, so I, 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 am perceiving that I'm actually playing the entire game. And so it could very well be the case that I get to the end of this game, beating levels like this, and just think to myself, okay, I've done it. I've done. And if it turns out I'm only 30% through, I don't know that I would go, oh, okay. Let me open it back up again and reevaluate the game. I'd probably just go, sure, I'm done then. Now this one... This one is quite complicated. Well, great! Oh my god, we have a complicated puzzle. Unless there's just more film lying around. All right, let me explore. See, like this. Now, this is some sick shit. Oh, Rubik's Cube. Harai wants to meet for, and I quote, a friendly game of Mahjong. I told her I'd meet alone, as long as she bought food. Pretending everything's fine and dandy always works better with food. Not at all how I'm supposed to do that shit, huh? Oh no, I I, I think it's, I like this photo, and then this needs to be oriented this way to be facing up. But then how do we get up? This, this is like a sweet puzzle. This is really interesting. Oh, yeah, sir. There's a number. I have one shot with the camera. I'm like perfectly anti position here, huh? There we go. You can see it now. Oh, 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 oh.
So if we did this, how? See what this produces. If I do like this, what happens when I... Oh, please go back. All right, so it's actually capturing a pretty large frustrum. Right. Good, good frustrum gaming. So this, th this, I really like this puzzle. So I have to, I have to capture this somehow. Actually, probably needs to be a little bit more like this. So th th this is this is the problem is that I need to make this angled up enough I think that this is the part that is tricky is how do I actually navigate to get onto this other side maybe that's a solution so if I actually whoop. So I'm curious. I don't know where the battery went. That's fine. I'll figure it out next. Do these things stick? This fucking game. This fucking game! See, this puzzle was awesome. This was fucking... This is a 10. This is a good puzzle. Yeah, Sophie Choice... I'm really kind of fascinated at the... You are fucking... Still feel like I'm doing something right. I I'm kind of surprised the amount of people comparing this game to the, uh, the Witness. So now this should be lined up. It's almost lined up. Let me see if I can just make it work. Yeah, I think the game that this is most similar to is Super Liminal. By a, by a considerable mark. Oh, fuck me. I wonder if this is not the way that I'm supposed to be doing this. Sure, this this is the right way to do this. If I 
backed up as much as possible. I did something like this. So now what if I... That doesn't even make a slight bit of sense, but that is... do like this, just so I can investigate. Sorry, let me do like this. Oh, this is a weird way to explore this that I hadn't considered. Go, go, fucking go! Okay. <laughs> I want to see what I actually captured on the other side. So what I'm trying, what I did in that sequence, I tried to make sure that the stuff that I was capturing was actually helpful. So. So let me, let me. Yeah, let's just take a step back for, for Sophie Choice, who just joined us. The Sophie Choice, there is this, these things. This is our exit to the level. So if I put it right here, you can see that I can stand on the teleporter, but it needs to be powered. And these two dots means that it needs two batteries. So there's one battery here. So I could take this battery and bring it over there. And because I took photograph, it doesn't matter that it is photographed. We get to exit, but I need a second battery. You'll notice that, like, I don't have any other batteries here. So we can't do it. So my thought process was, I need to take a photo that somehow contains this and the battery. And if you, if you take a photograph from an angle like this, it will capture the battery. So if I rotate like this and... See, a battery falls out of it, right? All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Guys, no back seating, clearing chat. Put on sub only mode. trying to do is trying to do something like this where I now have imagine I saved that battery and then somewhere on this other side I'll be able to see it if I keep falling no didn't get there So yeah, I, if this if it were as simple as just taking a photo of this through the wall, we'd be all right. But we somehow need to capture both. Let me just do a dummy check here. Make sure there's no other objects on the building. And there's no extra films. Great. Wait a fucking minute. What? These are traversable? Okay, so... What 
do we have here? Does this do anything interesting for us? So, let's see here. If I go... Sure. Photographer, why? Now this should just be flipped the other way. But still feels like this feels like it should be correct ish to me. This is what we were trying to do before, but maybe I just wasn't quite angling it. Exactly right. My understanding is that I just can't, like, the batteries won't, will not stay. See, it's too, it's too steep here. I forgot I can move this. I mean... This is actually kind of a comically basic puzzle. Give me that. Comically basic. I was overthinking it hard, man. All right, never mind. I'm I'm back into sad wonder territory. All right. Yeah, like, for some reason, my brain said, you can't move this battery. You can't move it at all. Ventress, have you ever checked out filament? It's loosely like the witness, except you are uh, physically the guy in puzzle, making line puzzles. Is it filament? Or is it firmament you're talking about? Filament. No, never heard of filament. I'm currently playing Firmament. Another F Ament. Nailed the punchline. Like, dude, I, I legitimately don't understand what this puzzle is. They were all so creative. You know what I mean? That was brilliant. Like... This never gets old. Like, like, I mean, legitimately, I don't understand what the puzzle is. Like, I mean, I, I, I. The, the phone, the, the camera's too powerful. Okay, so looking into this setup, there's clearly something wrong with the system. The deeper you go, the more the data are corrupt due to lack of upkeep. Meaning you might have to find your own exit if that's the case. I think our goals stay the same. 
Find the specs for the weather disruptor. Get out. Save the climate. What was the melon joke? A felon? All that good stuff. A felon? I'll reach out again when I can. Hope you're messing with reality in some cool ways. The corrupted data? Hmm. Yes, I have noticed over time that in the later sections of the simulation, the degradation has gotten progressively worse. But isn't that true for all things that once lived? Despite that, it's still wondrous. I hope you'll feel that way too. I mean, I think I think the camera is just too powerful. I think it just breaks the entire game. I have zero photos left. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, I know. This is what I was trying to do in the first place. Maybe fell a little too far. Fuck yeah. Dude, the camera's the camera's too powerful. Oh, whoops, I oriented it wrong. Oh yeah. I pray that you've been enjoying your explorations thus far. Alright, nice. Hey, my song. Fuck yeah. All right, I, I see a little spot up there. There's many memories stored here. Many impossible things. It acts as a record. Yeah, I think this is one thing that this game is doing that... Um... So wait, wait, if I do this... If I just put this over here, this should just be turned off, right? This doesn't go anywhere. Got it. Yeah, like, uh, the, the Witness, one thing I really liked about The Witness is that it, it just went really hard on puzzles. There were, like, hundreds of the basic panel puzzles. And, like, over a hundred of, like, the big map-wide puzzles. Like, it, it just felt like a game that you could play for an insanely long time. Okay, so... What? What? what what's the puzzle? What's the puzzle? That was a swift one, wasn't it? it? Really gets your heart pumping. Well, if you have one, of course. What's the puzzle? I don't know if this is how the rules work, but it is. All right. Okay. This is the game. Two, two pictures. So I take a photo of the entire contraption, step on the thing, take a photo of just the battery, flip it. Yeah. 
camera's overpowered, man. I'm like not even looking at the levels anymore. Speed okay, so I have one. I didn't I didn't photograph it. I, I did a bad I did a bad job. I did a bad job photographing. I mean the, the, the like is impressive. I mean this is the same puzzle, right? I mean, I, I... Like... I've been thinking about why... Like, I don't... Happened. Like, why did I need five for that? Five photos. Does this machine you're looking for really provide... Maybe to get you to overthink? Well, I don't know, like... It, I, I feel like I've experienced this puzzle cliff where I went from, here is a limited set of tools. You have this photograph and you're gonna place this photograph. And then when you get the camera, it's like make any photograph at all, any in the slightest. And like once I got the camera, Virtually every single one felt trivial, unless I did something really dumb, like just forgot that you could move the battery. Something that I've been doing all day. And you probably have also heard me say, I am a huge fan of... Oh, I see it's painted on the wall. Doesn't lock in. Okay. I'm sure many of you who've watched me stream other games have heard me say that I really like when a puzzle game. I see. Yeah, this is this is paint on a wall. A really weird illusion when you don't understand that. Yeah. Okay. Put the controller down. Some of you have probably heard me say when I'm talking about other um, puzzle games. I like when there's hard puzzle, medium puzzle, easy, easy, medium, easy, hard, really hard, easy, medium. I like that sort of variance. I don't like when it's just oh, going all the way to infinity, like constantly monotonically increasing. I actually like it when, it, when there's some variation. Nice. Really nicely designed. It's a bit clever, isn't it? Si Leung was always fond of games. A good puzzle to keep himself busy. His workspaces right. were no different. Nice. Now, things that, like, I, I, I have played... Okay, so... Mm, feel a bit coming on. 
This is a disaster. I need to speak with Miriam before this gets any worse. Where has she been anyway? She's so busy with her work, I haven't seen her outside her space in a while. I'll, I'll give her a call. This can't go on. Yeah, okay, so like... I feel like there's a lot of different ways to make puzzles in a puzzle game. A really common one is you know the rules. What you're trying to do is completely clear. It's just figuring out how to solve that is tough. A really simple example is a Sudoku. You see a couple of numbers. You know exactly what you're trying to do. It's the same in every Sudoku. It just might be tricky to understand how you're tracking your conditional, like, if-then sort of thing. You know, like, who knows? Um, sort of stuff is really tricky. Sorry, well, I got a notification. Yeah, yeah, so, so, and I feel like that, that's a common way to do that. Um, th there's another way of doing puzzles, which is, like, you are not quite sure what your goal is. Um, or even what your obstacles for f solving that are. A really good example of this is uh, traditional point-and-click adventure games. Where, you know, the bouncer won't let you into the club. And as it turns out, the solution is to use the turkey sandwich with, you know, a wrench that you found that causes some bizarre interaction that you can then give to the guy and he'll leave, right? It's weird, crazy moon logic where the, like, the sequence of hitting the buttons is, is very easy, but you're trying to figure out what the puzzle even is. Um, and I feel like this last area that we're in is kind of like that. Like... I might see, yeah, like like this sort of thing, like I might wander here and not notice that there is actually a stairwell here. I guess I'm coming from this angle. It's unclear what my obstacles are. Like, the goal to get to the teleporter, very, very clear. Um, how I solve it is actually trivially easy. Like, again, solving a Sudoku, that's the hard part, is actually solving the thing. But figuring out what your obstacles and your barriers are is the hard part here. And I, I, I think that that creates an incredible feeling of wonder when you're playing with the other thing. I'm not actually articulating that well. I'm going to try it one more time. Loosely, as just a simple framing, I feel that games have a goal, obstacles that are in the way of the goal, and then tools that the player can use to overcome the obstacles on their way to the goal. And if you play with the clarity of these things, you can have different effects. So uh, in a game like... I'm going to take Dota, because I'll probably play it later tonight. The goal is clear. And when I say goal, I don't just mean the win condition. I also mean the steps along the way there. In Dota, it's very, very clear that your win condition is destroy the ancient. And... The win condition is to knock down towers on the way there and grow in power in order to overcome that. And obstacles are obviously the enemy players and your and your tools are your abilities and your items and shit like that. And so I feel like, you know, in a game like Dota, if you give a really clear goal, knock down the towers and go through, you can have your tools and your obstacles almost be as complicated as you want. And then it's just this, like, incredible mystery how do you actually solve and optimize and wiggle and work your way through successfully and all this, and all this shit. Um, when it comes to puzzle games, I feel like a lot of puzzle games play with, like, you don't really know what your goal is here. You don't might not even know what your obstacles are. Might not even be clear what your tools are. And, like, consistently, when those moments that break, like, what are my obstacles and what's my goal, that stuff feels awesome. Um, great example. Inscription, without ins spoiling anything. The game starts... This is actually not that much of a spoiler because you'll experience it within your first hour of, of playing. It seems like it's a game where your goal is to beat this little roguelike. And then stuff starts changing and you're going, what, do you, what even is my goal? What is it that I'm even trying to do? And it creates a center of one, sense of wonder and mystery. Or like in Mario, if you stand on a pipe and hit down, you go sometimes go into the pipe. Whoa! It's unclear... What walls are even firm, <laughs> you know? Or 
my favorite kid chameleon, where like every level has tons of invisible walls that you can go through. And I think that uh, I I've made the argument before, if you give the player clear goals, you can almost make the game as complicated as you want. Don't mind me, just testing some things. If you, if you give the player clear goals, you can make the game almost as complicated as you want. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I created that behind me, okay. But if you have some kind of simple obstacles, simple tools, simple goals, but you're just messing with the player's expectation, I think that can create a really marvelous effect. All right, I fell for it. So you're gonna be invisible, invisible key. There's an, I feel like there is an invisible platform here. Probably I need to jump. Yeah. Figured it out. Like, that's what I mean. That was like a moment of wonder where this, this thing didn't exist until I jumped. So, in other words, it is creating these when I move through certain spaces. And it's, it's just, it's just a marvelous effect. It's like, this is super fucking visible. So here is where, where is that where I had the four columns? Great. So if I enter loop de round a roo, great. Just a marvelous effect. Marvelous. A plus. Incredible. So good, fuck yeah. Good cat. Fucking. Fucking turducken. Pretty sure I know what it wants me to do. get it placed where I want to place it. Just gonna make sure there's no dumb aha, you're actually supposed to go over here. Look through there.
Because what I think I want to do is I want to try to actually take a photograph of this, like, head on. How many photos do I have left? I gotta rotate it one more time, probably. Alright. Wait, was that my two photos? I'm fucking, I'm solving it, man. So what I need to do is I need to go over here like this first, take a photo, give me this, yeah. Gotcha. So it's telling me that there are state changes that happen in the game. Don't you find it fascinating? They're the solutions our minds can cultivate when given the space and motivation. They, uh, they might not always be perfect. Huh. But There's they state are changes that special. happen, and I can cause those or I can prevent those. And depending upon when I capture those images, it'll change. Did I wait? Did I do the? Did I do them all? Was that the optional? Have I done? Have I done? Did I? Have I? Have I? Were those the optional puzzles? I did all the puzzles that there are to do here. Not 100% on that, but I think that's true. The machine you're looking for. Is that the only chance you have? The only solution your mind has decided upon? Huh. And there's only forward, isn't there? I think I might actually stop there. So. All right, so what did I think? Oh, I started trying to move my mouse. I'm on the PS5, oh God. Okay, so I think that, like, so I really like puzzle games. I really do. And overall, I would rate this game pretty highly. I think that one thing that is absolutely true about a puzzle game is that there is a real binary quality to puzzles that you don't get in almost any game where there's action. Like, for instance, if there is a shooter where I over the course of five seconds, shoot a hundred bullets, right? Like, I mean, maybe slower than that, but not that much slower. Um, you can hit 5%, 10%, 50%, 100%, 73.5%. .5%. You can hit like a huge range. And so what it feels like in a FPS, if you're just measuring your accuracy, it feels like you can improve and regress a little bit and improve but if even 20 percent of the bullets are hitting the big scary monster then all right you're you are making progress towards winning you will be one fifth as slow as someone who hits 100 percent of them but like you know whatever amount of um um but whether you're slow or you're quick all players are making progression 
in puzzle games, there's this kind of weird percentage thing that happens where you put a puzzle in front of someone, or in front of, say, 100 playtesters, and the first one, 96 of them just get it immediately and beat it in under 10 seconds. And there's like just a few people that just get like really stuck and then they get flustered and then they go, oh my God, that's right. Oh, I feel like such an idiot. And then because they're embarrassed, they get into the second puzzle and they also struggle. Like, um, you know, when I was playing, there was that eye roll moment where I was like, oh yeah, you can move batteries. And then it was like super simple. So, oh, nice. And so I think that like there were, when I play puzzle games, I often think about, am I going to get stuck a couple times? And if so, how will that actually sour or how should I treat that experience as to not sour my whole experience of the game? And if you, any of you have watched uh, my Mostly Walking show on Mondays, you'll see us get stuck all the time. Oh my God. Like we really get stuck. Um, and that's okay because I'm sort of expecting to do that. We just did this on Monday where there was a tower I needed to go to to get a power up. And I just didn't realize that I could go to the tower and there's three zones and one of them, I got to the tower and one of them was like, hi, I wonder how you get to the tower and the other two. The answer is you simply walk to them. Like I was, we wasted like an hour and that's okay. I, I just sort of go, huh, well that's odd. And I sort of move on because that's just a common issue with puzzle games. There's no like I'm doing the puzzle and I can do it at 20% speed because I might be inaccurate, but at least I'm getting some of them in. Nope, you just literally are hard stuck, not advancing. And what's strange to me about viewfinder is that I hit a point where I was actually just moving at blistering speed with this overpowered camera. The camera is so overpowered that like the puzzle was like, all right, you have three shots and I took one shot and solved it. You have five shots, took one shot and solved it. And that felt so strange to me. It's, it's one of the rare times when I'm ever playing a puzzle game where I, I, part of me didn't feel like I was being smart and solving the puzzles quickly, I felt like there was something wrong with the puzzle. Yeah, I mean, there was something about those puzzles that felt like they were incorrectly constructed puzzles or there was an assumption about how it was gonna behave. Did, did, did anyone else kind of have that experience? There's a, there's a weird clicking noise over there, so I'm just gonna get over here. I mean, I, I like, I like ripped through that section. I almost wanted something that was like crazy extreme. Paranomasius says, solve a puzzle too slow and you feel like there's something wrong with you. Solve a puzzle too fast and it feels like there's something wrong with the puzzle. Well, like, I, I, I want to zoom in on that phrase because I think the thing that happened to me was not that the puzzle was easy. Many of the puzzles when I started the game felt easy and it felt like, oh, I see I'm learning some of the rules, uh, you know. Oh, there's only two possible paths and one is wrong, so I do the other one. Done. I'm sort of fine with that. I would view it as like, you know, here, here's... Here's the difference between easy and something's wrong with the puzzle. All right, so let's draw a maze. All right, so, so we're gonna, we're gonna say here's the start and here's the end. And like... If there were like a whole bunch of different paths that you could go through this maze and you were like debating about which path to go down. I don't design mazes, so I don't exactly know how they should be produced. Uh, let's do something like this. You know, let's put a little thing here just for good measure. Like... This is an example of a maze that has two paths, 
Alright, you can do this one or you can do this other one through the side here. Th there are indeed some dead ends that you can go hit here and whatnot. Alright, imagine that this is the maze. So now, what... This is a pretty easy maze to get through. It has two paths. I mean, hell, if I just did this, okay, yeah, it, it is now a maze with one path. But what, what, what those puzzles felt like is, here's the start, here's the end, and like, there's just, there's just a path that I can just take and like do this. And like, it literally doesn't even matter at all what's in here. <laughs> this is what it felt like to me. It felt like this. Well, hell, I mean, maybe, maybe like, it, it actually felt more like this. <laughs> you know, it, it just like, like I felt like I just immediately solved um, the thing, like so fast. And it was like, do you want to do any of this shit in here? And I'm like, no, I mean, it's it's like here, right? Can't I just go here? And it's funny because like right after that, I instantly did that level where there was like the illusory walls and it was awesome. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. And I actually had to go through a sequence and learn some things. Yeah, that was pretty, pretty solid. I think I understand now what um, Pain Dodo, Dodo Pain. I'm sorry, I can't remember which one's first or second. Um, like, ooh, I kind of want some more difficult puzzles. These mechanics are really sweet. I don't think it is a flaw or a fault that the game doesn't have more difficult puzzles. But I would love to see what a tough puzzle would be like. And the answer that the devs might have is, we tried that and it didn't work. The end. Full stop. <laughs> might be fair. But I think overall, uh, if you like puzzle games, I think you'll enjoy this as long as you're not going in expecting some sort of like high level challenge. I think if you are a non-puzzle gamer, this game was really gentle in terms of the difficulty curve. And I think as a result, it was just really, just really fun. Um, just felt like a lot of fun exploration, a lot of fun, awesome, wondrous moments. Just really, really intelligently, yeah, I think intelligently built is maybe a, a phrase I'd use to describe it. Like the, the game just seems to have an understanding of, okay, I really want to restrict the player to make sure that they don't have too many things going on so they can actually focus on the one puzzle that we're giving them. And you know, it's not even really going to be super about tough puzzles. It's going to be about experiencing the coolness that we're presenting them. Um, yeah, I liked it. Uh, I'm going to be off stream tomorrow. I'm off on Fridays uh, for a little bit more. I might be coming back and doing a few Fridays. A few Fridays. Uh, here and there. Pepper and the men. Uh, next week, we're going to do Firmament Monday. I haven't decided what I want to do Tuesday yet, whether I want to play Remnant 2 or Magic. Mecha Bellum's definitely going to be on Wednesday. I'm going to play the new DC card game on Thursday. Check that puppy out. Um... You know, I, I kind of want to place more RTS games in August. I'm not going to lie. I kind of want to play some um, more Age of Empires. I also kind of want to play Little War Game, which is an RTS I saw Grubby play. It's like a browser RTS. It's like 10 years old or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'm going to stop dropping my pen. I'm going to turn this puppy off. And I'll see you later, alligators. <laughs>